Have you ever run into problems where the data layer provided the right information but it wasn't in the format that you could use? Then in this video you are gonna learn how you can take existing data layer information and transform it so it is useful for your tags, triggers and variables without having to implement everything. And we do all this with the built-in capabilities of Google Tag Manager. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian and on this channel we do how-to videos, marketing tech reviews and tutorials just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now sometimes when looking at already available information of the data layer, you might want to only pull specific information out of the data layer. The built-in data layer variable is not as useful in this instance because it can only pull out specific key pair values and has no ability to actually transform the data that you would need for your tags. But we can utilize the very powerful custom JavaScript variable to accomplish our goals. So for this video, you will need to know a little bit of the basics of JavaScript to follow along, but we'll also have the tags, triggers, and variables that we're gonna to present to you here, ready for you to upload into your account at measureschool.com transform. Now, this is kind of advanced, so if you don't have much experience with the data layer yet, I'll urge you to check out our essentials training, which will teach you how to use the data layer effectively. If you're already an experienced GTM implementer, then we got lots to cover, so let's dive in. Today our journey starts in our Google Tag Manager account, where I have put our browser into the preview and debug mode already in order for us to see what's going on on our demo page. Now I wanna go through some examples on how you can transform the data layer. First up, transforming the data layer into the right format. Now on this test thank you page, there is a data layer deployed that is custom. And if we look into the data layer, we can see here a transaction event that holds all the different key pair values for our transaction. Now these are in a special format and this is the format of the classic e-commerce tracking. You might know that there are two ways of deploying e-commerce tracking to Google Analytics. There's the classic way of e-commerce tracking and the enhanced e-commerce tracking way. Now, both of those need different kinds of implementation of the data layer in order to work. So this is the format of the classic e-commerce tracking and there's also the enhanced e-commerce tracking way of pushing that data. Unfortunately, they are not compatible. So if you want to switch over from this classic e-commerce tracking data layer, you would need to re-implement the enhanced e-commerce tracking data layer, which is unfortunate because really the data is the same. It's just in a different format. So how can we solve this problem without having to re-implement the complete data layer? Well, I've come up with a little script here that is built with the help of variables. So let's go over to our variables and you'll be able to download our templates at measureschool.com slash transform later on so you can upload those. But I have an example here for a custom JavaScript that takes in our transaction data layer and goes through the different products and then pushes that data into an enhanced e-commerce tracking object. So in essence, our classic e-commerce data layer will be transformed into a enhanced e-commerce tracking object that we can then use. How would that look like? Well, if you go over to variables here and we'll click on our transaction event, we can see that we now have a enhanced e-commerce tracking object that we can now use to send our transaction data over to Google Analytics. All we need to do is go over and instead of choosing to use the data layer for our enhanced e-commerce tracking, we can simply read the data from a variable here. So all you need to do then is choose our predefined variable. And that way we can use the enhanced e-commerce tracking with the help of our transformed data layer into an enhanced e-commerce tracking object. So we have transformed our classic e-commerce tracking data layer into an enhanced e-commerce tracking friendly e-commerce object. And this is one example of how you can take data and transform it to work with the format that you need to use 
for your tags. All right, next up, let's talk about how you can piece together certain data points that are available in the data layer so you can output your preferred format. So in this example, I have an enhanced e-commerce tracking data layer on this test thank you page, as we can see here. And I wanna try to pull out certain product details here and push them into an array. How can this be useful? So for example, when we implement the Facebook conversion pixel and use an advanced form of tracking that data, we might want to not only put in the value or the currency, but rather also the different products that were bought. So here we have the different product IDs that need to be transferred over to our code. How would we do this? Well, the data is practically already here, but how can we access it and put it into the right format? Again, I have come up with an example here as a custom JavaScript variable can pull out the right product IDs from a given data layer. So in this example, I take the data layer and access our enhanced e-commerce tracking data layer, go into the purchase object and then the product object. So in essence, we access our e-commerce, then purchase and then products object. And then I write a little bit of a loop here, a for loop that goes through the different products and pushes the ID back to our array, which we will then return later on. How would this look like? Well, let's go over and look into our variables. And under the transaction event, we can here see our custom JavaScript product ID. And now it is in the right format, so we can use it for our Facebook transaction pixel. This is easily done by going into the tags and creating a new Facebook audience tag. Right here we have our base code and down here we simply use our predefined variable in our code so we can push the right content IDs. So in essence, we have taken our custom JavaScript variable to access our predefined data layer and pull out pieces of information and transform them into a variable that can be used in our tags. Now another example of this would be to actually go through each and every product and use the quantity metric here and count that up. So I've built another variable for this. It's the custom JavaScript product quantity that you can also find in our tag template. All right, in our final example, I wanna show you how you can import data that might be already available to you through other forms of implementation. So for example, on this thank you page, there is already a data layer of sorts implemented, but it's in a different format and this is the Qubit format. Now Qubit is a software that offers a lot of different capabilities of personalization on a platform, but they use their own data layer form that is called the universal variable that's implemented on the page. Now this is again a data layer of sorts which is stored in a JavaScript variable just like the data layer. Now this is easily accessible if you can use the developer tools. So let's go over here and open up our developer tools and enter the JavaScript console. And we can simply put in universal variable. And we see here we have an object and there is certain information in there. Now, this object holds a lot of data that we would like to use for Google Tag Manager as well. Unfortunately, it's not really in the format of the data layer, but as we have seen, we can transform that later on. First of all, I would like to import that data into the data layer. How can we push that data without implementing a new data layer into our platform? Well, we just need this information to be pushed through JavaScript into our data layer. And this can be easily done via a custom tag. So let's go over here to Google Tag Manager. I have something re prepared as well, which is a data layer push. And this simply takes our syntax of the data layer, checks whether it's already available, and then pushes our universal variable with the universal variable key into our data layer. Now there's a special event here, universal variable, so we know when it is available. How would this look like if we reload this page? Our preview and debug mode shows that we have a new universal variable and the data layer then exposes all that information and it's now part of our data layer. So we have in essence imported an outside variable 
into our data layer. And this might be useful if you have an existing tag management system or personalization system, which already holds all the data that you would need. You just need to implement it into your data layer and now you'll be able to build your own data layer variables, transform that data and use it in your tags and triggers. So there you have it. This is how you can transform a data layer to get the values you need for your tags. If you want to download our tag template with all the scripts in there, you can head over to measureschool.com transform and it'll give you a file that you can directly upload into your Google Tag Manager account. Now, there might be many other use cases for these kind of transformations that you do to the data layer. So I'd love to hear from you. If you have encountered any tricky situations that you could um, solve with this technique, then leave a comment below and share your measure approach. As always, if you like this video, then hit that like button, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for the next video, which will come out next Wednesday. My name is Julian, till next time.